A sign from God. Just hours after the Pope announced his surprise resignation, the heavens over Rome opened and the top of St Peter's Basilica was struck by lightning. As the sky was lit up by the huge bolt, it led to speculation as to whether Benedict XVI's boss was less than happy with the news. The apparent divine intervention came as the 85-year-old pontiff sent shockwaves through the church on Monday after announcing his retirement, the first pope to do so in 700 years, saying he no longer had the mental or physical strength to carry on. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. We don't know what this could mean, but the French press agency put out this photo from today showing St. Peter's Basilica at the Vatican on the day we learned the Pope was abdicating on a day of stormy weather in Rome, it should be said. We want to show you some extraordinary pictures which came to us from the Vatican on what was, of course, an extraordinary day. Within hours of Pope Benedict announcing that he was to resign, take a look at this. Lightning struck St. Peter's Basilica. You can see it again now in slow motion. Extraordinary. It happened just before 6 o'clock in the evening, local time. Mate. You know, even Ca I've heard Catholics say that this Pope is very different from any other. The way he's uniting religions and one world ecumenical, new world order. You know, the Jezebel spirit usurps authority where it has none. I was thinking about this the other day. The Jezebel spirit usurps authority where it has none. Um, and this is kind of the way this new ecumenical religion, Babylonian New Age religion is working. Usurping authority over where it has none. You know, it's pretty interesting. Usurping authority over the man, over Jesus, the true king the Queen usurping illegitimate authority. She is the one to take you to that light. Who do you think that light is? Lucifer. I mean, please do not tell me this is not a, an ornate temple of Diana, the mother goddess. Sorry. I don't think that went down too well. But look, the celebration of fertility. The birth of Tammuz. Whether you call her this, or you call her that, or you call her this, or you call her that, she's the same wherever you go. She is the mother of God. She's the universal life force. Satan is very good at accommodating whatever culture, whatever age, whatever clime you, have to, you, you happen to be in. Make a difference to him. He's very good at accommodating it. What I simply mean by that is he'll make you feel comfortable wherever you live, in accepting his religion. Oh,
first Jesuit pope comes to a Jesuit general congregation. One of the biggest lies of this whole masquerade is that this is built on St. Peter. That's one of the, the, the hinges that it stands on. Um, when in actual fact, there's a lot to say that Peter himself wasn't in Rome and that this is actually a Gnostic religion. And I'm not saying there's not true believing people who are in the Catholic Church that truly believe in the Gospel of Christ have been misled, but I'm saying come out of her, my people, because this is a masquerade that is leading to the great deception, and that's the danger of it. As we all know, the prelates in the Roman Catholic Church are all about the symbols. They place so much stock in these symbols, in fact, that they literally become Catholic dogma to them. For example, notice the so-called bleeding statues of Mary. Literally millions of Catholics are taught to bow before these statues, and even though the Vatican won't admit it, they all hold to the unspoken command to bow and worship to every statue the priest blesses. And yes, they do in fact pray for, sprinkle holy water on, and literally kneel before such statues, and even kiss them to sanctify them into the minds of the people. I used to be Roman Catholic many years ago, and I partook in such ceremonies in my early adulthood. Now, I can show all sorts of icons, medals, statues, and even prayer beads to confirm this all to any Roman Catholic as dogmatic fact, but I see no need to do so because this is common knowledge throughout the church. That all being said, since we know the symbol carries as much power to the Roman Catholic as their catechism does, one has to wonder what they were thinking in Rome when they sanctified certain rituals, clothing, and items of worship in the Roman Catholic Church. All of them were first embraced by the pagans thousands of years ago, and to this day are used in satanic worship services the world over. I'm gonna post a compilation of pictures that I just posted to the website this morning that do in fact show that the priests in the Roman Catholic Church are performing satanic rituals right before the eyes of the people in their church, and yes, Many priests will lie and claim that the Satanist does this to mock the priest today. But the problem with that theory is all these rituals were found first in paganism thousands of years ago, which is in fact the original ancient form of Satanism. And the prelates in Rome admit they have embraced paganism in writing. Notice what it says here. It is interesting to note how often our church has availed herself of practices which were in common use among pagans. Thus it is true, in a certain sense, that some Catholic rites and ceremonies are a reproduction of those pagan creeds. And then Cardinal Newman admits in his book that the use of temples and these dedicated to particular saints and ornamented on occasions with branches of trees, incense, lamps, candles, votive offerings on recovery from illness, holy water asylums, holy days and seasons, the usage of calendars, processions, blessings on the fields, sacerdotal vestments, the tonsure, the ring in marriage, turning to the east, images at a later date, the ecclesiastical chant, and the Kyrie eleison are all of pagan origin and sanctified, no less. They literally say they sanctified us by their adoption into the church. Check out these pictures.
Thank you for watching. I'm sorry to say folks, but those doors are not built for the size of a human being. Those doors are not built for the size of a human being. My goodness me. I've seen this exposed on YouTube before. On the surface level, it looks like a throne. And by the way, that throne is not the size for a human being. It is the size of a giant. If a human being sat on that throne, they would look like the size of a child. If the Pope sat on that throne, he would look extremely small. This painting is of George Washington laying the cornerstone to our capital. This is significant because he's wearing his full Masonic ritual regalia. He's got a square and compass. And then, as I walked into the main temple of this Scottish Rite building in Washington DC, right there before me was the black cube of Saturn, the Roman god of time worship. And the Hebrew writing in the middle says, God said, let there be light, and there was light. in the middle says God said let there be light and there was light Writing in the middle says, God said, let there be light, and there was light.